Thank you very much, uh, Aniko, and thank you, Ferenc, for the invitation. It's uh, really nice to be here, and I'm happy uh, to share with you some of my thoughts, uh, which uh, is, I understand, included in this series of uh, um, considering uh, the, the near and uh, uh, further future of uh, Europe. My topic as a political philosopher and historian of political thought is two uh, ideologies, nationalism and conservatism, uh, and the connections between the two terms, how they relate to each other in the context of some recent phenomenon, phenomena, uh, to, to make it <laughs> exact. But before uh, explaining that, let me describe the two uh, pictures that I have here. Uh, because, of course, the nationalism and conservatism will be discussed in the context of uh, Europe, uh, the V4 countries, uh, Poland, Hungary, uh, Czechs and Slovaks, as well as uh, Britain. And this is the first picture, which I think is a very telling one. Uh, you see Boris Johnson in the middle, uh, Prime Minister of uh, the UK, and uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel, uh, you know, they are the two important figures, all the others are uh, looking uh, towards them, uh, but she is, uh, I think, uh, the one who is uh, really, uh, uh, you know, taking the lead, and this person is uh, Viktor Orban, uh, Hungarian Prime Minister, and uh, yes, uh, and, and, and the gesture uh, that he makes is pointing towards Boris, but talking, uh, or, or at least having the eye contact uh, with uh, the Chancellor. So I think it's, it's quite uh, telling about uh, the relationship, the context of um, uh, leaders. This was uh, one of the uh, summits uh, deciding about the future of uh, Brexit. And the other one is uh, 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 the, the, the ceremony where when the um, philosopher uh, Sir Roger Scruton got uh, the Polish uh, uh, Order of Merit uh, 2018, so quite uh, recent. Two, uh, this is 2019, 2018. I try to be up to date uh, just in order to uh, not uh, let you uh, smile at my being a philosopher and uh, you know talking about Aristotle and Plato. In any case, let's uh, let's see what's uh, going to be the the topic. Uh, there is a claim that there is a kind of populist breakthrough, uh, not only in Europe, uh, but uh, also in Europe, which uh, uh, particular facts uh, could count like that. Uh, one of them is, of course, Trump, the other one, Brexit, and the third one is the V4 countries. These are the phenomena that I would like to address uh, today because I think that uh, there is this common denominator that they are all claimed to be uh, populist movements or populist uh, um, uh, events. Uh, and I have got some problem with, uh, with, uh, with the notion of populism. Uh, and these are the two uh, literatures which uh, came to me, to my, my attention, which uh, address uh, these two uh, contexts. Uh, uh, quite recent books, uh, 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 one of them about the, the V4 context, the other one about the American context. And I, the interesting thing that both of them refer to uh, something like conservative nationalism or national conservatism. So that uh, uh, the claim is that instead of talking about populism, uh, one might uh, regard these uh, phenomena as uh, belonging under this uh, uh, umbrella term of uh, conservative nationalism or national conservatism. So uh, as a kind of a combination between two major uh, uh, ideologies, conservatism and nationalism, which we did not uh, usually regard as uh, coming too easily together. So that's, that's uh, the new thing about it, that uh, nationalism and conservatism might be considered to belong together in this uh, new uh, context. Uh, but then what is national conservatism? How, how should we define it before uh, we can actually work with it? 
Is it a reaction to uh, some global tendencies like a reaction to neoliberalism? Or is it a revolt against post-communism? Uh, you know, the, these are the different uh, uh, contexts in different uh, geographical or geopolitical contexts that uh, one can argue uh, what national uh, uh, conservatism stands for. Or is it simply an effort to return to a Europe of nations in the European context uh, when we think about the, the, the future of the European Union? So these are possibilities. I don't want to argue for either of them, but I would like to uh, invite you to think about them in this context. Uh, there are certain terminological alternatives besides populism that might be considered, like conservative revolution. That's, uh, that's uh, a term that is uh, quite often used and uh, in uh, similar uh, 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 senses. And also, there are uh, uh, certain uh, uh, theorists who like to uh, point at what they call new conservatism, uh, and not neoconservatism, but new conservatism as a, as a, as a new uh, uh, term for this phenomenon. Uh, you know, distinguishing it from old style or even classical conservatism. This is, uh, this is uh, um, the, the terminological. Uh, 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 innovation. And uh, the reason why I thought that uh, this might be interesting is uh, the Paris Statement uh, from two uh, years ago. So, uh, uh, two years ago, a Paris Statement, uh, a statement of uh, 11 intellectuals uh, who consider themselves conservatives or, uh, well, some of them liberal conservatives. Uh, who together published uh, this statement, um, which I consider to belong to this uh, move. And then there were two gatherings of intellectuals, one of them uh, uh, happening in London uh, this spring before the uh, European elections, the other one uh, happening uh, in the summer in Washington, D.C., uh, in an American context. And both of them uh, refer to uh, this uh, new thing, uh, national conservatism or conservative nationalism. And I think that, uh, that they create a context uh, which might be interesting to look at. This is the uh, part of uh, the Paris Statement when, where we see that indeed, uh, although they consider themselves as conservatives, what is uh, uh, the, the heart of the problem they, they want to address uh, is uh, uh, the, the, the global uh, uh, imperial uh, 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 challenge and uh, as an opposite, uh, uh, the community of uh, nations uh, as the alternative that they would prefer, they would like to, uh, to see um, uh, defended. So uh, the Paris Statement is uh, arguably uh, a, 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 a claim to return to uh, and the shared uh, uh, European uh, tradition of nation states as opposed to a kind of a global uh, imperium building. Then the, this is the, the conference in London where again what we see is that uh, they, they regard the European Union as increasingly hostile to national identity, uh, and they claim that this is uh, an unpopular move. So in this sense, uh, they uh, in fact uh, uh, indirectly refer to populism as, as uh, um, the background to this uh, problem. And uh, uh, well, again, uh, the, the good uh, uh, solution, the ideal scenario would be a kind of a return to, to, to the nation state. And, uh, and uh, the one in uh, Washington, D.C., again, what we see is that, uh, that uh, uh, they uh, regard that, uh, that the, the issue of the day is a turn toward nationalism, a return to nationalism. Uh, and uh, interestingly, uh, they regarded uh, uh, conservatism also in crisis, and they claim that a renewal of the conservative uh, uh, agenda could possibly be a return to nationalism. So it's not only a, 
uh, a crisis of neoliberalism, but uh, also a crisis of conservatism. I guess uh, they might refer here uh, to the Republican Party's uh, problem uh, uh, after the Trump era. So these are the, the references that uh, I would like to refer to uh, and the context uh, uh, that uh, I, I want to address. And these are the four points that I want to get through. First, an overview of the, uh, I'm a political philosopher, not a, a political scientist. So what I'm interested in is uh, the ideas behind uh, the moves, but of course, uh, those ideas that are actually uh, uh, connected to, to the political events of the day. So what I will offer here is an overview of the ideology behind uh, Trump's uh, <coughs> um, victory, then an overview of uh, the conservative revival in Poland and Hungary, and uh, claim that, uh, that some uh, philosophers are actually responsible, uh, at least partly, uh, for this uh, phenomena. And uh, my two uh, heroes will be uh, Joran Hazony and uh, Sir Roger Scruton. Now let's see. And, and uh, the, the thesis uh, that I want to offer for um, scrutiny is that uh, it's not simply a populist move that is uh, a, a shallow uh, 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 search for, for uh, uh, popular success. It's uh, an ideological uh, breakthrough, uh, a theoretical, with a theoretical backbone, a strong one. And this theoretical backbone uh, is a combination of nationalism and conservatism. And that this happens not uh, in just one region, in one, just one nation, but uh, this is an international phenomenon. These are my claims, and I, I will be happy to hear your views on that. So the first point, overview of the ideology behind Trump's uh, triumph. Uh, I try to uh, search for, for pictures which uh, can uh, actually uh, uh, um, translate the problem into visual signs, and I hope that uh, uh, you will see the connection between the picture and, and what I'm going to say. I use uh, this book uh, by this author, uh, Age of Iron on Conservative Nationalism, a, bu a book um, which tries to uh, uh, discuss uh, the American context uh, of uh, uh, conservative nationalism sometimes national conservatism, uh, it is called, sometimes it is called conservative nationalism. Uh, but uh, in any case, uh, let's see uh, uh, what is uh, the point uh, that is made uh, in this uh, uh, book. First of all, uh, it is, uh, 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 well, confessed that nationalism is not uh, an innocent uh, uh, ideology. That is, uh, historically speaking, there are a very uh, important examples when uh, nationalism uh, went uh, uh, too far and turned into violent, aggressive, and authoritarian. And, uh, uh, and of course, the, 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 the key uh, issue is here, 1930s Germany and the Second World War. So that's, that's uh, the negative uh, uh, pole. And on the positive pole, what is uh, offered is a civic conception of nationalism, which is not uh, the, the violent, aggressive, and authoritarian version, but uh, a more benign version of uh, uh, nationalism. And the claim is that uh, uh, we live in an age of uh, this uh, uh, populist nationalist revival uh, on the right. Uh, and in particular, uh, that uh, we live in America in an age when uh, the uh, American tradition's inherent uh, nationalist uh, roots uh, uh, are uh, blossoming and, 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 and uh, presenting a, or, 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 or growing into a new uh, phase when uh, the nationalist agenda uh, is uh, made uh, uh, explicit and, uh, and comes to surface uh, from this uh, tradition. He, the author claims that uh, this is an old, uh, in fact, one of the oldest traditions within the American uh, political uh, heritage, but one that uh, was not uh, always uh, explicit. Uh, this is a democratically oriented and civic form of patriotism. 
So uh, his uh, uh, argument is that in America, uh, nationalism is uh, not that uh, aggressive and, uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, violent uh, stuff, but something that can be uh, uh, called civic. Uh, it's a civic form of patriotism, and we have to keep in mind that sometimes the word patriotism is introduced in order to, to show that it, this is the, the benign form of it. And uh, what does it mean? A love of a particular place. So it's not about race, it's not about religion, it's about uh, locality, that you uh, belong to a certain place, that you have got a certain attachment uh, to a locality. Uh, and uh, the claim is that uh, America can be loved in this way, in a patriotic form, but also that uh, it is in uh, America's interest that all the world, uh, so the globally speaking, uh, we need to keep nation states, independent nation states. It's better for the world to have nation states than uh, the global um, uh, uh, world governance or whatever uh, else uh, is considered as the alternative to it. And he also claims that this conservative nationalism is not undemocratic. There are uh, uh, a lot of critics who claim that uh, this way or that way it will uh, lead us out uh, from democracy. Uh, no, uh, the claim is it's a democratically oriented nationalism. And uh, also uh, the claim is that it is uh, closely connected to classical conservative assumptions. So it's a very uh, bold uh, uh, claim, I guess, but one uh, which uh, tries to give uh, uh, some uh, substance to the Trump uh, phenomenon, to the description, the interpretation of the mm, Trump phenomenon. Uh, uh, the claim is that uh, although this is something that was present in the, the founding fathers' uh, way of thinking and uh, the, 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 the documents, uh, uh, the historical documents of uh, uh, the birth of the American Republic, yet uh, that uh, it uh, was not uh, always made explicit and that there was a, a counter movement, uh, a movement away from that tradition, like in the example of uh, Roosevelt and uh, Truman, Franklin Roosevelt and Truman, uh, who took uh, up uh, the flag of uh, liberal, uh, uh, globalist, uh, internationalist, uh, 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 banner uh, which uh, w went against this uh, nationalist uh, trend. And then uh, it in a, in a uh, counter reaction to this uh, 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 move, uh, the, 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 the uh, grassroots level reacted with a hardline nationalist uh, uh, reaction. And the claim is that after 1990, again, it uh, uh, surfaced uh, in political debates and that uh, it is, uh, in fact, uh, the reason why Trump could get through. So it's not a populist move. It's not Trump's genius. It's uh, the, 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 the simple fact that uh, Trump uh, tapped uh, into this uh, conservative nationalist uh, move on the grassroots level, and that's why he could uh, get through. And uh, of course, uh, the Republican uh, Party has to react to this uh, grassroots level uh, uh, reaction against uh, the, the, the liberal, neoliberal agenda. And that's why political populism, cultural conservatism, and white working class uh, uh, demands uh, uh, were made uh, uh, louder and louder, and that's where Trump uh, could get uh, uh, his uh, hold on power. And the claim is that uh, no matter whether Trump will win or not, uh, conservative nationalism will remain uh, on the scene. So that's the, the American context. Let's uh, see the, the European con context. Uh, first of all, uh, Poland. Uh, again, uh, uh, I remind you that the pictures might uh, tell us uh, a lot more than uh, what I will actually say, uh, and, and one can also compare the, the pictures to see whether it's a global phenomenon or something that is uh, uh, more uh, particular, in particular contexts. Uh, uh, I will use uh, this book, uh, again, uh, quite uh, a recent one, uh, which uh, uh, has uh, uh, a lot of uh, 
uh, uh, particular uh, essays on Poland, on, on Hungary, and on Russia. Uh, I will not talk about Russia, but it's important to note that uh, in this uh, context, Russia is regarded as, as uh, part of the same uh, intellectual climate. Uh, the argument of the book is that uh, th these are actually uh, uh, researchers from Berlin, so it's a uh, European literature on European affairs, as the, uh, the first one was an American literature about the American uh, context. So the, the, the main claim of the book is uh, that, uh, uh, in fact, uh, neither in Poland nor in Hungary nor in Russia should we uh, 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 simply use the term uh, populism to uh, understand the phenomena over there, but that it uh, is, uh, in fact, conservatism. And that's, I think, again, a, a brave claim to, 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 to argue that, well, Putin is a, a conservative uh, politician. I will not address that issue, but I will look at the Polish and the Hungarian uh, context. Uh, and first, the Polish context. Uh, this essay uh, uh, takes uh, uh, the development of uh, a knowledge network, as it will be called, of uh, conservative intellectuals and their institutional affiliations that uh, build up uh, this climate of uh, conservatism that is behind uh, the progress, uh, the, 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 the breakthrough of uh, PIS and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Kaczynski. Uh, and the claim is that this is a, a post-communist uh, 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 phenomenon one which has got a long history, in fact, uh, dating back before the transition. Uh, and the, the main issue here is a criticism of both post-communism and neoliberalism. These are the two enemies that they want to uh, overcome uh, by, by uh, means of uh, uh, theoretical arguments. Uh, the, this is a very powerful uh, uh, intellectual movement, the claim is, not mine, the, 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 the claim of, of the author of the essay on, on Poland. And uh, these intellectuals uh, actually worked out a very detailed uh, program for this uh, conservative uh, movement. Uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, a movement against these uh, opponents, neoliberals and post-communists uh, in uh, Poland. There is that pre-1990 scene, uh, and there are some examples of, of that scene. There is a post-99 scene uh, uh, of this development. I will not uh, touch upon the details, but if you are interested in them, uh, I just uh, uh, try to, to show some of the main uh, 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 um, protagonists uh, in those uh, 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 historical periods. The, the important thing is to see that it is not just one uh, or a few uh, uh, hardliners, but that there is a general, uh, uh, in, in fact, uh, at some point it is called a civic society, a conservative civic society that was built up uh, in, in, in Poland uh, uh, in order to facilitate that, uh, that breakthrough. Uh, and uh, that means that there are uh, journals, uh, and uh, institutions like, like uh, uh, research institutes, uh, think tanks, uh, 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 and uh, the coalition of, of these uh, or, or the, 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 the uh, uh, debates uh, between them uh, helped uh, to, 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 to grow this, uh, this, uh, this movement. And <laughs> well, it means that, uh, that they uh, were, uh, uh, in fact, uh, examples for later generations. So uh, there are, uh, we are talking about uh, more than one generation uh, that, that uh, uh, took part in that uh, uh, development. And uh, uh, there are, uh, uh, after, uh, there is a generation after 2005 when they first uh, came into power. Uh, again, uh, uh, an important point when uh, a movement gets through and uh, gets into power. Uh, it was just a short period uh, for the first time, uh, but uh, it, uh, it again helped to establish certain institutional 
uh, uh, backgrounds. Uh, and, uh, and then there will be the second one after 2015 when uh, they again uh, won the elections. And uh, uh, this literature does not come to the uh, final point, I mean, uh, for our present uh, uh, discussion, which is that uh, today, uh, again, uh, this year, um, uh, uh, Kaczynski won uh, uh, the election. And let's see uh, what is this conservative discourse about. Uh, first of all, it is a claim uh, of UCLAD of a kind of a, an agreement, a settlement uh, between uh, old-fashioned uh, communists and left uh, liberal Solidarność elites uh, to, to take over uh, the, the, the power uh, after 1990. Also, uh, there is this notion of a collusion a kind of, uh, uh, um, well, almost like a, a, a conspiracy uh, to, to take uh, 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 the upper hand. And uh, that perhaps even the secret services were uh, uh, involved in these uh, procedures. And uh, uh, I have here a quote uh, from Andrzej Novak, uh, uh, the uh, famous historian uh, in this um, uh, uh, um, circle, who claimed that, in fact, uh, uh, the, the whole attitude of, uh, of uh, uh, the old Europe, uh, part of Europe, uh, towards the new uh, coming countries, was, uh, in a way, uh, 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 you know, uh, counterproductive, uh, because uh, they wanted to, to, to address them as if they were uh, newcomers who should learn the, the, the first basic lessons of democracy, while uh, what he claims is Poland is a, a mature national culture with its uh, particular principles of social life. And um, what we hear is uh, a reference to history, tradition, and uh, culture and prejudice, all of them um, the major uh, components of a conservative tradition. So the argument uh, is uh, interesting for us because it is partly a nationalist argument and partly uh, a conservative argument. It tries to establish uh, Polish uh, uh, sovereignty. Uh, in that sense, it's uh, a nationalist uh, uh, claim by reference or with reference uh, to the historical background, to, it, to the traditional uh, 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 past that, that uh, uh, one can refer to. And in this sense, it, it is uh, embedded into a conservative discourse as well. A second point I is that it is a very, uh, so, uh, this, this is a historically minded uh, conservatism. There is a philosophical um, uh, um, part of the message, which is worked out uh, with uh, reference to the Catholic uh, philosophical tradition of the country, where uh, the issue is uh, agency or subjectivity. That is, that a country uh, which is uh, worth uh, the name of a, a country, of a state, should have its own agency, its own subjectivity. It should be uh, uh, a sovereign uh, 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 political agent. And this is uh, based on the, on the uh, phenomenological uh, understanding of the human person as it was developed in the, in the early 20th century, uh, uh, partly uh, in a Catholic personalism and uh, partly in a ca Catholically oriented uh, phenomenology uh, of, of the age. And I think it's, it's very important to, to keep in mind that, that this is a, a country where the Catholic tra tradition uh, survived, uh, where a, a reference uh, uh, to, uh, to God is not uh, uh, simply a provocation of um, the opposition, but uh, something that is uh, inherently necessary to, to talk about uh, uh, sovereignty in a uh, decent and uh, philosophically substantialized uh, way. Uh, so uh, again, uh, the Catholic social teaching uh, comes up uh, uh, in issues like uh, solidarism as uh, 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 requirements for this uh, uh, understanding of uh, a morally uh, 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 substantialized uh, concept of the state. Uh, and what happens uh, uh, between 
2005 and 2015 is that it turns out that PIS is not simply a populist party but an idea-driven party uh, that is supported by intellectual conservatives but uh, which takes uh, uh, on board a very uh, uh, powerful uh, uh, attitude. Uh, it's, so it's not that sort of civic uh, uh, patriotism that uh, was referred to in the earlier context. It's a very, uh, very uh, uh, strong and uh, characteristic political agency that uh, we require, uh, we see here, and that's uh, which uh, that's the reason why uh, there is this uh, discussion of a Polish-Polish war. Uh, uh, this is a cultural war within uh, Poland. Uh, uh, between this uh, conservative uh, uh, agenda and and the the, the, the well not uh, the the leftist one but uh, of of the other uh, right wing uh, party which uh, uh, try to keep the politically correct uh, um, uh, uh, European uh, agenda alive, uh, uh, Tusk and, and and his followers. So that that uh, was uh, the first uh, period, and then. Uh, after cutting, uh, we have got the 2015 victory, uh, when again some conservatives joined uh, the circles, while others are leaving uh, the party because they think that it, they went a little bit too far by that time, and uh, some of the, the intellectual conservatives uh, would withdraw their support from uh, uh, that moment on. But, as I said, uh, still a further victory is waiting for, for Kaczynski uh, this year. Okay, so that was uh, the Polish context. So let's, uh, let's see the Hungarian uh, context. Again, uh, uh, um, uh, the visual uh, uh, message is, uh, I think, uh, quite obvious. Uh, but let's, uh, let's see how, how it works uh, uh, as far as the theory is concerned. Uh, again, we see a post-communist uh, scene, uh, uh, a party that uh, tries to identify itself with uh, trying to overcome uh, the, the, the communist past, but also uh, looking for a new uh, opponent and uh, therefore uh, working out an anti-European, anti-European Union uh, rhetoric uh, uh, and uh, uh, in fact uh, 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 tending towards uh, a more authoritarian uh, uh, form of uh, politic, uh, uh, politics. Uh, like uh, referring uh, to uh, illiberalism as its uh, background notion and also the notion of the central field of power, which sounds a little bit uh, uh, awkward if um, we uh, keep in mind in the German uh, uh, past. Uh, uh, as uh, it will be claimed, there are different tendencies uh, uh, be, uh, be, uh, among uh, the intellectuals that support uh, Fidesz. Some of them uh, uh, going for this uh, uh, neo-Weberian uh, 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 understanding of the state. As uh, a speaker that you um, had the opportunity to, to listen to, Ishtman Stumpf, he will be referred to in this context uh, as a neo-Weberian theorist of, um, of the strong state. And uh, uh, there will be another uh, understanding of uh, of, uh, of um, this uh, post-communist uh, 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 moment, uh, uh, which I will return to uh, in a minute. Uh, but uh, the claim that I would like to make here is again that in fact what we have here is a national conservative uh, uh, agenda for, for Fidesz. So it's not simply a populist uh, uh, rhetoric, it's not simply uh, pragmatism, but there is uh, some uh, serious background uh, uh, theoretical background to it, uh, uh, even if it's uh, not uh, the politically accepted uh, one. Uh, the story starts out, uh, again, this is, uh, I'm referring here or relying here on the uh, essay on, on Hungary in the, in the volume that I mentioned earlier. And uh, the authors uh, start the story from the, what they regard as the liberal betrayal uh, in 1994. Um, there was a, a, a general election which was won by the uh, socialists, but the socialists uh, got into power with the liberals uh, uh, in coalition. 
and that's the moment which is regarded uh, uh, on the right as, as the moment uh, of uh, liberal betrayal, i.e. that uh, uh, the new uh, party uh, got corrupted by going uh, uh, to, to uh, government with, uh, with the post-communists. And again, uh, there is an argument that a knowledge network is built up uh, on this basis, uh, on, on trying to uh, address both um, the liberals uh, and, uh, and uh, the post-communists. Uh, and this uh, had the, 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 the role to disseminate uh, uh, the, the, the agenda, the, the ideological message. And this is a, a very interesting uh, list of um, major authors that uh, 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 this uh, essay uh, tries to identify as the, the basic uh, uh, people behind, uh, behind uh, Fidesz. Uh, Ferenc is not uh, on the list. <laughs> it's not my, it's not my. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, uh, these, uh, these are groups, uh, uh, one of them belonging to this uh, think tank, Sazadweg, uh, and they have got already two generations. The other ones are the real ones, the real, uh, you know, smart guys, the advisors. Uh, so these are only thinking. They are actually, you know, uh, well, not doing it, but letting uh, people to do it. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, Istvan Stumpf uh, is uh, in, in the first uh, generation. And uh, well, it's uh, not important uh, for us uh, uh, theoretically. It's just important to see that uh, uh, there is this, uh, this climate that is uh, built up by, by these uh, um, uh, institutions and, uh, and uh, intellectual uh, 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 circles. Uh, what is more interesting is uh, the, the agenda that they, they try to push uh, through. Uh, the, one of them, we are uh, within the uh, think tank of Sazadweg and see the, the difference between the two generations or two different attitudes, uh, understanding of uh, conservatism. Uh, Stumpf is going to this, uh, uh, for this uh, neo-Weberian uh, understanding of the state. I, that the, the, the basic problem with the post-communist liberal state was that it was weak. It could not uh, uh, achieve anything uh, because it was too weak. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's for sure. Uh, the question is whether uh, the alternative is the strong state that is provided or offered here as an alternative uh, by Stumpf, who himself was uh, uh, cabinet minister uh, in the first Orban government. So he has got actual experience of, of uh, running a government and perhaps it's from uh, that experience that he builds up this uh, uh, ideology. The other one is a more theoretical uh, uh, argument. Uh, the claim is that, well, both uh, post-communists and uh, 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 neoliberals or liberals are, or left liberals as they are called in the Hungarian context, uh, are uh, in fact uh, uh, belonging to this more general notion of uh, modernism. And therefore, what we need is anti-modernism. We have to realize that all these modernist tendencies uh, will actually go uh, for a, a centralized uh, uh, authority for a global uh, governance, and, uh, and that would destroy our national tradition, and we have to return to it in one way or another. But basically, we have to deny modernism as, uh, as something that is relevant for us. And uh, the, the key p uh, guy behind the, the scene is claimed to be Jula Teller. Uh, it's not important for us uh, particularly. Uh, the, the, the important thing about it is uh, that, uh, that um, uh, we have got a reference here to this uh, um, uh, intellectual debate uh, which goes back uh, at least 100 years in, in Hungarian history between what is called the urbanist and the populist. Uh, this sounds, I think, quite crazy in English, <laughs> and they don't describe the same thing as uh, the, the Hungarian terms. But uh, the issue is uh, 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 a quite sensitive issue, which is, uh, of course, anti-Semitism, which is uh, uh, claimed uh, in uh, um, connection with, uh, with Teller's uh, uh, radical criticism of liberalism. And he is uh, 
um, uh, supposed to, to invent uh, the notion of the illiberal state. So that, that uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe Orban took it uh, from him. Uh, so in the Hungarian context, the conclusion is that uh, this is uh, not uh, a Russian type of uh, conservative agenda. It's a Western type of uh, conservative agenda. Uh, but it's not the classical laissez-faire liberalist uh, uh, conservative agenda of the first uh, Orban government, but something that uh, goes further and further away uh, from the accepted Western standards of conservatism, uh, and, uh, and therefore it's, uh, well, uh, less uh, acceptable uh, in Europe, uh, generally speaking. And now I turn to the second uh, uh, part, which is for me more interesting. Who are the philosophical voices behind uh, these, uh, these movements and the intellectual circles? And I've got uh, uh, two examples. One of them is Joram Hazoni, uh, who is a, a philosopher, a political scientist, and, uh, uh, and a very uh, influential uh, advisor, political advisor. Uh, who studied at uh, Princeton and Rutgers and uh, went back to Israel and uh, established the uh, uh, foundation and uh, think tank and uh, uh, became quite influential actually uh, and published uh, uh, quite widely. And I will refer to his uh, uh, re most recent book, The Virtue of Nationalism, uh, which is uh, uh, quite a success uh, uh, by now. And uh, the claim is that Hazony is uh, a philosopher who is uh, quite into politics. He was uh, uh, an advisor to Netanyahu and uh, remained closely aligned to Likud party. So we are, uh, you know, we have to be aware of, of uh, its own context of, of, of the words that um, he uh, uh, put down into in, uh, in his uh, books, a connection between these. No, no, no. The, the, the name looks like, but I, I'm, I'm at least I'm not aware of any Hungarian connection of him. Yes. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing is that uh, what he provides is this um, uh, bipolar system. He claims that there is uh, an international order. Uh, of liberal uh, imperialism, and uh, uh, as opposed to that, uh, he provides an alternative, which is the nation state. So uh, again, we are uh, in the same uh, context, uh, a good uh, uh, alternative uh, uh, opposing uh, the tendency of, of uh, uh, 20th century uh, political developments. Uh, uh, he claims that uh, uh, this imperialist ideology is present, uh, in fact, uh, all over the world, and therefore what uh, uh, is uh, uh, obvious there is a natural reaction uh, of it, to it uh, all over the world, again, uh, nationalism. Uh, why is it uh, better than, than, uh, than imperial, uh, liberal, uh, uh, global governments? Because uh, the claim is uh, that uh, uh, nations uh, should uh, have uh, their uh, say in their own future. It's their uh, 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 future, so it, they should keep uh, the power to decide about it. And uh, if uh, any other solutions are offered, that would be contrary to, to, this, uh, to this basic insight. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, he is uh, referring uh, to um, um, uh, the, um, the um, um, religious background to it. Uh, in a way, uh, he tries to uh, refer even to the, the uh, Israeli uh, biblical uh, tradition of the kingdom of Israel as the basis of this uh, uh, understanding of the nation, uh, which is again uh, an account of the nation which is uh, conservative in the sense that it is based not on race, uh, but uh, on a shared understanding of history, language, and religion. So a very uh, conservative um, uh, description of what a nation state uh, is. It's not the modern understanding. He claims that Gellner and all the others, Hobsbawm, are wrong uh, to claim that uh, nationalism is a modern 
uh, invention. It's something that is already in the uh, Jewish Bible. Uh, and this is actually a very, uh, 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 well, not aggressive, but a very uh, powerful notion of the slave. He's, he, he brings up this alternative that uh, either eternal enslavement or going to war. But it, this is uh, again to be understood, should be understood in the context of the Israeli-Palestine uh, uh, conflict. So uh, that is generalized and uh, theorized on a general level. And he claims that uh, both uh, 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 Brexit should be understood in this context and also the Czech, Hungarian and Polish uh, case is again uh, belonging to this development that uh, people are recognizing that, uh, that uh, uh, the world is developing in the wrong direction, uh, direction and therefore there is a need uh, for a reorientation uh, uh, towards a, a more nationalistic and self-deterministic uh, account of uh, politics. And uh, not only he himself refers to it, but uh, uh, those who, who try to make sense of his arguments and uh, the, the, the quite tremendous success that he achieved with the book uh, claim that, well, in fact, uh, Hazony is uh, uh, so successful because uh, uh, his uh, description can be uh, 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 easily uh, used to explain the Brexit um, uh, phenomenon, the radical right uh, developments uh, in, in Europe, even Hindu nationalism, and uh, also the illiberal uh, reforms of, uh, of Poland and Hungary. So that's, that's uh, not something that he claims only, but uh, his interpreters, his uh, critics also claim that. And the other one, and this is my last point, uh, is uh, 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 again a philosopher who is uh, 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 referring to national conservatism, but who presents an alternative understanding of national conservatism than what uh, was provided by Hazony. This is Sir Roger Scruton, uh, a, a British philosopher, or should I say an English philosopher, <laughs> Uh, by now, I think uh, uh, that would be perhaps the right description. And uh, uh, I will use uh, his uh, book, uh, The Need for Nations. This is a little bit uh, earlier than the, the other uh, literature, so one should uh, uh, be uh, cautious uh, uh, because uh, 15 years might uh, mean a, a different uh, uh, discourse. But uh, I claim that uh, it's still relevant. Uh, so. I can use it uh, uh, for my uh, own purposes. Uh, he claims that uh, nationalism is uh, indeed something that is quite dangerous. So again, uh, he follows the, the pattern that was used by um, his American uh, uh, colleague, uh, that he is aware of the dangers of nationalism. Uh, and again, uh, the references to the Holocaust, uh, uh, at least one of the references, is the Holocaust, which makes the point uh, uh, so uh, uh, dangerous. On the other hand, he, he claims that instead of nationalism, what he is uh, talking about is national loyalty. That's the concept that he likes to use. And he claims that this is a different understanding of uh, why the nation is uh, all important. Uh, and this is not a belligerent uh, ideology, but uh, one uh, that is uh, uh, based on a love of home and uh, therefore uh, uh, requires uh, the defense of it. Uh, and he also distinguishes his uh, conception of it from a religious understanding of, uh, of uh, uh, this national conservative uh, uh, agenda. So he, he does not uh, uh, regard himself as belonging to a religiously motivated uh, one, which is interesting if we look at uh, the picture that I uh, <laughs> used here. Uh, and Scruton uh, claims that national loyalty is founded in the love of place. And we can refer back to the Paris Statement, uh, which used the same reference and tried to uh, um, um, substantiate uh, uh, nationalism as a love of place instead of a uh, racial issue or a religious issue. 
And also, he refers to customs and traditions, so he is embedding it uh, into uh, the conservative uh, discourse. Uh, and uh, the claim is uh, that Europe, in fact, is uh, what it is because it is uh, based on this uh, national loyalty and not uh, on a loyalty uh, based on uh, uh, or towards a religion or uh, anything else. So it's, uh, it's the locality that is uh, um, most important. And uh, he also uh, uh, introduces uh, the cultural element here. Um, this national loyalty is enshrined in works of art, and these art and literature uh, is uh, uh, not about war, but of uh, peace. And I would like to refer to the uh, um, philosophical argumentation that is provided here, which I claim is quite close, actually, to the um, uh, Polish uh, understanding of, uh, of uh, why nationalism uh, uh, matters. He claims that, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, with, the, with the nationalist agenda, we uh, uh, have to uh, um, understand it uh, in the context of uh, the nature of the human being, and the nature of, uh, so it's, uh, it's an anthropological approach to, to, to nationalism, and the, uh, the argument is that the human nature is um, uh, created, uh, constituted in a way that uh, it does not, uh, um, the human being does not uh, 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 actually operate without uh, being, uh, having this attachment to, to, to place and uh, uh, to what uh, uh, is called home. So uh, homecoming and the contentment with the place is the same argument than, uh, than the, the, the uh, uh, Catholic personalist account of uh, the human being uh, provided. Uh, a settlement is required and, uh, and uh, a very uh, 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 stable, uh, solid uh, uh, contact with the neighborhood. Conclusions. Uh, I try to substantiate the, that there is an upsurge of the national agenda and that it is to be understood not in the context uh, of what is uh, called populism, but in the context of conservative nationalism. And uh, I also try to argue that uh, uh, there is an ideological background to this uh, conservative nationalist agenda. Uh, and that's how it, go, it connects the uh, nationalism to conservatism, and that there are political philosophers who worked uh, 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 on it, and that uh, there is an intellectual uh, uh, network, a uh, knowledge network that uh, paved the way for its uh, upsurge uh, in all the, the contexts that uh, I referred to. And I think that uh, uh, behind all this is um, a moral concern uh, that is uh, 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 all important for this uh, understanding of politics. That's it. Uh, I'm looking forward to questions and comments.